So on my left here, I have the Pine 64 Pine Phone, and on the right is a, is a uh, Nexus 5 running the latest Ubuntu Touch. Both of these have just been updated not too long ago, about 30 minutes. So they they are not out of date. They've just been updated. Um, this Pine Phone here is running Ubuntu Touch with the kernel upgrade branch, which has a full 60 hertz refresh. It does introduce some bugs, but it is, you know, for normal just showing the web browser and stuff, it'll be fine. So it's just mainly calls and stuff like that that are broken. Um, and it does have a few other issues too, but uh, you can disregard that. So uh, I'm just going to do a quick comparison though. So this Pine Phone here in Ubuntu Touch is running um, Linux 5.10. It's it's a custom patched kernel for specifically for the Pine Phone. And it's an old one too because Ubuntu Touch has not updated it yet. Um, they, you know, the... The uh, Ubuntu Touch port for the Pine Phone has really kind of fallen behind in updates and stuff like that, unfortunately. It, you can see it's running an RC release of 5.10. But it does have full 60 hertz refresh. Um, if you have the normal branch of Ubuntu Touch, like the RC release or the stable releases, it does not have uh, 60 hertz refresh, so keep that in mind. Uh, with 60 hertz refresh, it's nice and smooth, and it's uh, as fast as the Pine Phone currently can really offer. It's nice and snappy. So I'm going to quickly enter my passcode, my PIN, into this uh, terminal here to get it to launch, and then we could do the uname as well on there and see what's there. So it's running a really old version of uh, the Android kernel. It's from the cyan cyanogen times. So there we go. All right, so 3.14, or, or 3.4.0 cyanogen, um, which cyanogen is that old, uh, it's kind of like a, EOS and stuff like that going on now. It's a fork of, well, not really a fork. It's a community-run Android project, or at least it was. Uh, it was de-Googled and all that, too. Um, it no, it's no longer around. It's been gone for a while now. But uh, there is, there is you know, continuations in other forms. But, yeah, the, so Cyanogen itself is gone. And it's, so seeing this kernel here, you know that's old. But uh, Linux 3.4 is also no longer supported. This thing's really, really out of date. Um, and also really not a good idea to use this thing as a daily driver or anything for that reason. It does not have any security patches. Um, so let's launch um, both. So you can see that opened really fast there, like as soon as I opened it. Pine Phone took a little bit longer. It really wasn't that bad. Um, but you can definitely tell it was a little bit slower. Not bad, especially considering the price of the Pine Phone. And the hardware, I mean, the GPU and the Pine Phone especially, and like this DMMC speeds and stuff like that are kind of slow for modern standards. Oops, I gotta go back to Pharonix. But considering the fact that this uh, is an entry-level $5 SoC with the uh, power management uh, in integrated controller, PMIC, um, it's $5 in total from all winners. This isn't really that bad of performance. I mean, although Ubuntu Touch is definitely more optimized than other stuff, so you won't get this kind of performance with uh, really other interfaces. I mean, this is buttery smooth here in Ubuntu Touch. But anyways, regardless, um, you can see here on the Nexus, it is buttery smooth animations here. Like you move your finger, it instantly responds. It's nice and smooth rendering things. And it's snappy too. It's very fast. The Pine Phone's not bad, but you could definitely tell it's kind of a little bit slower. It, the uh, I don't know how the best way to describe it is like the text kind of jumps a little bit, just a tiny bit. It's really not that noticeable, but it does happen. And then also, of course, um, you know the loading times, as you saw, were a little bit slower. And I'm sure if we go to like say OMG Ubuntu, and then I'll do it on this one too. OMG Ubuntu. I just gave the Pine Phone a head start, and it's... Oh, actually, it did beat the uh, the Nexus there. That's surprising. Neat. All right, let's try that again. Let's do... Uh, I wonder if it had something to do with, like, caching or something. Um, what's a website I've never been to on these? Um, let's do Cengage.com. In gauge.com. This is just something my college uses. 
So, and I have not used it on any of these two devices. So I'm going to give the Pine Phone a head start and then quickly tap the Nexus. And as you can see, the Nexus did beat out the Pine Phone there. Pine Phone's still going. So it definitely is slower. It's really not that bad. I mean, come on, it's a $200, $150, I should say. It's another $50 for the convergence model with an extra gig of RAM and uh, twice the MM C storage. And it comes with a little dock to hook it up to a monitor um, to do convergence. Although I will say that it does really struggle with the Pine Phone. Just the hardware really just starts to struggle when you hook it up to a 1080p monitor or higher. That's when it's just, you know, really not the most pleasant experience. Um, with Fosh, though, it does run okay because it's using CPU rendering. Um, but with, when it uses, when it had like a uh, Plasma Mobile, for example, uses the GPU to render stuff, uh, actually just like Ubuntu Touch here does, which is why it's so liquidy smooth. Um, and when it does uh, convergence on another monitor, uh, Plasma Mobile really starts to slow down and become sluggish. I mean, it's usable, don't get me wrong, but it's not the fastest experience by any metric. Uh, meanwhile, the, the Nexus here has plenty of horsepower to do convergence. There's videos online of that. It's buttery smooth even when you do convergence and stuff like that. And that's because it has a much more powerful GPU and a CPU that's actually pretty powerful too. It's clocked higher. I think it is lower end still, a, a little lower end than the PinePhone CPUs, but the clock speed makes up for it in the faster SoC overall. Um, I'm pretty sure this still has faster RAM and faster um, EMMC speeds and stuff like that, and that all adds up to make it much smoother and faster, and particularly the GPU as well, which is why it's so buttery smooth when you scroll through stuff, whereas the Pine Phone can be a little bit off. I mean, not that it's bad, but, you know, you can see here it's a little bit, whereas this is much more smooth. So anyways, it... it at the end of the day, for $150, and also you got to keep in mind this software is still a work in progress, so it could improve more. For $150, the Pine Phone's performance really isn't that bad. Um, let's close this out. And I mean, there is uh, there is the fact that this Pine Phone does use um, Wayland in uh, Ubuntu Touch, and actually most other desktops too. I mean, like. Uh, XMMO, I'm not sure what it's called, but XMO, uh, mobile interface, that uses XORG, so that's an exception, but like Fosh, Plasma Mobile, Ubuntu Touch, they all use Wayland, and uh, the PinePhone's actually the first Ubuntu Touch device to use Wayland. The, um, the, all their Android devices, like the Nexus 5 here, they use Mir, um, so that's why they're so liquidy smooth, they don't really have that many issues. Sometimes you will run into issues with the PinePhone. Um, and I'm sure maybe some of the performance issues, too, aren't always the hardware. I mean, like, sure, the hardware struggles sometimes, but I'm sure maybe there's some improvements that can be done in the Mir session. Um, I guess it doesn't help that this is running a really old version of Mir, too. Oops. So it's not, um, I think it's Mir 1.8 or something like that. The latest versions of Mir are, like, 2.3 or 2.4. Don't quote me, because... I don't remember off the top of my head here. Let's open the browser and check. It's kind of hard to type with one finger while holding up the camera. So let's search for the GitHub page. Yeah, here we go, Mirror Compositor. All right, so uh, let's find the release page. I think we gotta scroll down, here we go. So 2.3.2 is the latest uh, release of Mirror, and it's had it had some uh, X Wayland bug fixes and stuff like that. You can see here, copy and paste between Wayland and X Wayland, uh, Firefox Wayland fixes. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Wayland-related fixes and improvements in the, in the recent mirrors. And the Pine Phone, unfortunately, is stuck running on Lomiri uh, 1.8 right now. Uh, they're working on, like, a compatibility layer. I think uh, Lomiri Weir Mirror or something like that. Or uh, I think, actually, I think that's 100% wrong. But anyways, they're working on a compatibility layer that will allow Lomiri to interface with the newer mirror versions. However, that's going to require a lot of work, and it's probably going to take some time. And, um... I mean, on top of that, too, the Pine Phone's running a really old version of Ubuntu Touch. That might play a part. I think they only just got it up to QT 5.12. And um, 
there's now Qt 5.15.2, obviously, which is you know the latest uh, LTE uh, LTS release of Qt with a bunch of bug fixes and improvements. So it would be nice if they could update that and get to a newer Ubuntu base like 20.4 and get the newer mirror. But I I understand that's all work in progress. It'll take a lot of time. So I think this is probably the best we'll get for now. But uh, it's definitely promising. I mean, this is really, really smooth and fast. I mean, c compared to this, it's not that bad. The The Nexus 5 cost more when it was new, and right now it's running an ancient version of the kernel. So, I mean, there's that. Um, and it really hasn't gotten much love lately. Whereas the Pine Phone, you know, it's it's new, it's it's cheap. So give it a little bit of leniency and give it time to develop, and hopefully over time it will get better.